What we're doing is something similar to what SpaceX did. SpaceX drove the cost per pound to orbit down significantly with things like Falcon 9 and Falcon 9 Heavy. We're doing the same thing by taking the cost per cubic meter down of operating space and driving that down significantly. Wow, that sounds good, right? Yes, Sierra Space reveals their insane progress. SpaceX achieved another milestone. Hey, I'm Lucas. Welcome to the SpaceX community. Let's get started. I think it's been a long time since we discussed Sierra Space's Dream Chaser project, right? We've been focusing too much on SpaceX's Flight 3 and Flight 4 updates. Anyway, today I have an update for you all about the second space plane of Sierra Space in development. So, Tenacity, also known as DC-101, a commercial space plane, has been under rigorous testing at NASA's facility for its inaugural launch. But Tenacity isn't the only star of this show. A second space plane, Dream Chaser Reverence, is currently under construction, promising to add more depth to the Dream Chaser fleet. The plan for Dream Chaser's debut is ambitious. The goal is to significantly increase the frequency of launches. While Tenacity is designed for reuse, having additional vehicles allows for upgrades, accounts for refurbishment time, and ensures a backup is always ready. Recently, we received an update on Dream Chaser Reverence, which is currently being built alongside its Shooting Star cargo module at the Dream Factory in Colorado. This second space plane will play a crucial role in transporting cargo to the space station. Hints about this additional vehicle have been dropped over the years. Back in 2022, a tweet teased, and then there were two alongside a picture of a second Dream Chaser. The recent image of the space plane, still in its early production stage, underscores the immense amount of work and time required to build and test these vehicles. A NASA OIG report from 2018 shed some light on the company's plans. It highlighted the risks associated with Sierra Nevada's plan to build a single Dream Chaser spacecraft for CRS-2 missions. The report suggested that a second Dream Chaser could be built from spare parts without additional cost to NASA in case of a failure. Fast forward to today, and Tenacity is expected to complete a minimum of seven cargo missions to and from the space station, carrying essential supplies like food, water, and science experiments. These contractual obligations, coupled with the company's future goals, justify the creation of additional space planes. However, Building another Dream Chaser is a time-consuming process. To give you an idea, Sierra Space started working on Tenacity around 2016. And now, almost eight years later, the vehicle is nearly ready for its maiden flight. The experience gained from building Tenacity should expedite the construction of a second space plane, but it will still take years. The company faced numerous challenges during the space plane's development, from increasing payload capacities to revolutionizing launch procedures. One notable hurdle was designing a space plane barrier that could be easily stowed and deployed, but wouldn't allow anything to escape the craft's crew module. This design complication alone took a significant amount of time to resolve. The success of Tenacity's first flight is crucial for the future of the program. The mission needs to go smoothly, from the initial launch to the ISS approach, berthing, entry, and landing. Any hiccup could halt the mission and force Sierra Space back to the drawing board. It will likely be years before another Dream Chaser is ready, which means Tenacity needs to survive and continue launching. Earlier this year, Tenacity was shipped to NASA's Armstrong Test Facility to complete its pre-launch testing. The vehicle was attached to the Shooting Star cargo module and put in a vertical configuration. It successfully completed its first phase of environmental testing, which included sign vibration testing, a separation shock test, and wing deployment. Once this test was finished, the Shooting Star cargo module was detached from Dream Chaser and transported to the nearby In Space Propulsion ISB facility. Tenacity also recently arrived at the same facility, where it will complete thermal vacuum testing before being sent to Florida for the much-anticipated launch. As for the launch date, Sierra Space and NASA have yet to provide a specific date. However, official statements released a few months ago mentioned a launch sometime in 2024. A summer launch seems likely. 
Sierra Space CEO Tom Weiss recently stated, This is the year that we transition from development and into orbital operations. It's the year that changes how we connect space and Earth. Currently, Crew-8 is aboard the International Space Station and is trained for Dream Chaser Tenacity's arrival. The goal is to launch the vehicle while the same teams are still aboard the ISS, rather than having to train another future crew. Both Sierra Space and NASA seem very confident that Dream Chaser's first launch will happen soon. As we eagerly await Tenacity's maiden flight, the second space plane, DC-102, is in the early stages of production. Sierra Space is working diligently to create a fleet of vehicles. We can only wait and see how they will impact the overall space industry while SpaceX is already leading the game. Anyway, I wish them all the best, and I will try to keep you all updated regarding this in the coming episodes. I'd like to quickly remind you to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. We regularly upload informative SpaceX and space news videos that you won't want to miss. Be sure to turn on the notification bell so you're notified whenever we release new content. SpaceX achieved another milestone on March 30th by successfully launching Eutelsat's latest geostationary satellite. Eutelsat 36D, destined for a strategic orbit over Africa and Eurasia. The Falcon 9 rocket, carrying the satellite, blasted off from Launch Complex 39A at Kennedy Space Center, Florida, at 5.52 p.m. Eastern Time. Within 34 minutes, the satellite was deployed into a geostationary transfer orbit. Eutelsat 36D, built on the Airbus Eurostar NEO platform, boasts 70 physical Kuban transponders designed for delivering television and government connectivity services from its position at 36 degrees east. It features a steerable antenna and is poised to replace Eutelsat's aging Eutelsat 36B satellite. Eva Bernecke, CEO of Eutelsat, confirmed that Eutelsat 36D is scheduled to commence commercial operations in the latter half of 2024, following its orbital positioning and health assessments. Notably, Eutelsat 36D will share its orbital slot with Express AMU-1, also known as Eutelsat 36C, operated by Russia's RSCC. This co-location underscores the complexities of international satellite operations, especially amidst geopolitical tensions. Express AMU-1, like other satellites, has been impacted by sanctions stemming from Russia's conflict in Ukraine. SpaceX's successful launch of Eutelsat 36D also marked the 273rd time the company has retrieved a Falcon 9 booster for reuse, underscoring its commitment to sustainable spaceflight. This mission was particularly significant as it coincided with the anniversary of SpaceX's first reused Falcon 9 booster launch for a customer back in 2017. Furthermore, the Eutelsat 36D launch contributed to SpaceX's remarkable achievement of completing its 30th mission of the year. However, the company's momentum didn't stop there. Just hours later, SpaceX launched a batch of satellites for its Starlink Low Earth Orbit, LEO, broadband constellation from a nearby pad at Cape Canaveral. Despite adverse weather conditions forcing the cancellation of another Starlink mission from Vandenberg, California, SpaceX demonstrated its agility and resilience in executing multiple launches. Eutelsat's expanding satellite fleet includes not only geostationary satellites like Eutelsat 36D, but also a constellation of over 600 LEO satellites, following its acquisition of OneWeb. Leveraging multi-orbit capabilities, Eutelsat aims to provide enhanced network redundancy and flexibility to enterprise and government customers, distinguishing itself from single-orbit constellations like Starlink. Looking ahead, Eutelsat is on track to complete 90% of the ground network required for OneWeb's global services by the end of June. This progress highlights the company's commitment to accelerating the deployment of next-generation satellite networks to meet the growing demand for connectivity worldwide. In summary, SpaceX's successful launch of Eutelsat 36D 
underscores the rapid advancements in satellite technology and space exploration. As companies like Utilsat and SpaceX continue to innovate and collaborate, the future of satellite communications promises to be more resilient, flexible, and interconnected than ever before. Thanks for watching today's episode. Don't forget to subscribe and give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for another great video tomorrow.